All right, so I've actually got the mics hooked up to a car, and it's the same situation. I've got two channels, blue and red. One mic right there, right above the radiator. The other mic right there on the other side of the, the engine bay. So they're hooked up just like that. The engine's running, it's just idling. Um, every once in a while the fan comes on, but more or less it's pretty steady. And you can see the waveform here. They overlap each other. There's some anomalies, but they overlap each other pretty dang close. So you know, you're looking at just a, a representation of the noise of a normal running engine. So what we're going to do is we're going to test the the concept um, that I was that I was uh, looking at earlier and see if we can isolate the source of noises. Yeah, see right there the fans came on. Uh, but see if we can isolate the noises, uh, isolate noises using these microphones. And I've already done some things. That the, the results are pretty interesting, but um, we'll go ahead and see what we got. Uh, let's see. So I've got the the scale set up to 500 millivolt and a time scale of, I believe it's 50 milliseconds per division. So let's go ahead and what I'll do is I'll show you where I'm going to hit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit right here. So we are closest to the blue channel and we're farther away from the red channel and we should be able to see that represented in, in the graph. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to tap this and then we'll pause it and see what we got. Let's stop that and we'll go and take a look at, at our graph and see what it looks like. Alright, so that was just tapping it with a screwdriver. Not really loud, but it definitely reacted. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this. And we'll zoom in again one more time. And you notice that the the nasty waveform of the idling engine when you zoom in it gets pretty clean so you're able to see you're able to see the uh you know what it picked up for me hitting it pretty good and i found that no matter where where it lands on on that uh, uh pattern the normal the normal idling pattern um you can still see you can still see this uh, this waveform pretty clear so I was closer to the blue channel when I tapped and further away from the red channel. And you can see right here, blue channel reacted before red channel did. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll repeat this, except I'll tap closer to the red channel and we'll see if red channel reacts, uh, reacts before the blue channel. So we'll go ahead and just restart that and just repeat this, except I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit right about here. That way I'm right next to the red channel and we'll see if it picks up first. Just like that. Come over here. Pause that. See if we can find the... Here we go. It's that one right there. So, like I said, you can see, you get this, the, the pattern from just the normally idling engine. And we'll go ahead and zoom in on our noise that we created. I mean, look at that. I mean, that signal, there's a little bit of noise there. It's probably just electrical, but there's a signal right there from the engine it normally running is is pretty clean once you start zooming in. So it, it looks like finding these noises is going to be pretty easy. So obviously we got red channel, and it's obvious that red channel <clears throat> picked up that, that impact long before blue channel did. I mean, you could even measure it if you wanted to. You can drag these cursors over and say... You know, this is our first peak on red channel. We picked it up first, and then here's the first peak on the blue channel. And we've got 604 millionths of a second. I remember when I was doing this on my toolbox, that's roughly the time that it was taking, and they were about 24 inches apart. And on the vehicle right now, I don't know if they're about 24 inches apart, but they're kind of close. So it looks like the, the time frame is similar kind of getting similar results in, in that regard. But it's clear, the point being that red channel, where I tapped right next to it, 
right, right next to the microphone picked it up first and this is this is excellent because even though we've got the engine running and all the vibration and noise and even when you zoom out and you see the pattern from the normally running engine you think well that's going to interfere with your ability to hear the noise and honestly I didn't hit that very hard and you can see the amplitude uh, of that of that uh, signal that was generated is plain as day absolutely without question be able to to, ice, to pick, pick that out from the graph so we'll go ahead let's go ahead and uh, start this again so we're going to move the microphones and this is kind of interesting we move the microphones we'll put Oops, sorry, hold my phone. <laughs> We're gonna put the blue channel right on this engine mount, right there. So right on the stud, and that is essentially bolted to the block. And you know what? We'll go ahead and move. Eh, well, you know, we'll just leave red. We'll leave red channel right there. So I've got red channel right here, and I've got blue channel on that mount over there. Um, the engine's obviously going to be isolated by those engine mounts, so that's going to uh, be a factor in what we see. So, now this is the, the normally running engine um, pattern that we have. Obviously, blue channel being on the engine is, I would expect to have a lot more uh, a lot more a, you know, more of a signal, a stronger signal than the red channel, which you can kind of barely see buried behind blue channel. I mean, I could move it, but I think that the point is that they're overlaid on top of each other. It makes it easier to to discern the starting and, and ending point when when you make a noise. But so we'll go over, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap. I'm going to tap right here, right on this engine mount right next to the microphone and we'll see uh, I already did this but we'll see if red channel even picks it up so we'll tap just like that we'll come back to our screen and we stop that so we just have to find find which page picked it up there we go so even with this engine running and all the vibrations that are created by that engine and this microphone is right on the block essentially and I mean that's the source of all the vibrations you're still able to pick out where where on the graph that noise occurred so we'll go ahead and zoom in on this and it's plain as day you know here's our normally running engine it's really noisy because it's right on the, on the block um, but here's right where the noise happened and you can even see red channel under here and red channel is nice and clean and I would expect that because it's right uh, uh, the engines isolated by the rubber and the engine mount so that sound isn't going to transfer transfer through so what we're going to do now obviously it picked it up so there's no issues there we're going to go back and I am going to tap next to the red microphone we'll see that picked it up Come back here and we'll find our find our graph here's the one that did it and we'll go ahead and zoom in on that so even with all this noise you can still you can still tell Red channel picked it up, blue channel didn't. Red channel's on the body, blue channel's on... Sorry, I'm shaking a lot, I'm holding, trying to hold my phone at the same time. Uh, blue channel did not pick anything up, because that's on the block, it's isolated by the engine mounts. Red channel on the body, right next to where I tap, picked it up. So we're able to determine, if we're hearing a noise, is it coming from the engine? Is it coming from the, the body, the suspension, something like that? We might be able to tell that. I think you do this long enough, you know what an engine noise is, but still, it's the, the concept of it all. So now, let's go ahead and take, we're going to take red channel off the body. Let's move it, let's move it close. You know what, let's go ahead, we're going to put, we're going to put red, I'm going to stick it right on the bolt 
for number three coil pack and that bolts right to the cylinder head and I'm going to take this this one blue channel and I'm going to stick it on that valve cover bolt so they're both bolted they're both stuck to the head essentially uh, but they are a little bit farther apart from one another so we'll come back here and we'll see what this looks like zoom out play that And it doesn't like the scaling, but honestly, I don't really care about that. The vibrations are just so wicked. Let's make sure that's right on that bolt. Nice and good. It's got magnets, so it pretty much sticks itself to the bolt all by itself. So we'll move these channels off each other, and you can see there's something there. That isn't, it's not really important what that looks like. What's more important is whether or not we can pick up a time difference between when, this, when the vibration hits one mic versus the other. So I'm going to tap right next to blue channel, and you know, we're about 12 inches away from the other one. I'm going to tap right on the head. We'll see if we can pick that up. So now let's stop this. Go back to our... And it's all pretty noisy. I'm going to have to just go through these one at a time. Oh, I think that was it right there. So we tapped right next to the blue channel. Let's see what happens when we zoom in and look at that. I was noticing a little bit of noise, but that shouldn't have an impact on what we see. So it looks like blue channel picked that up nice and strong, and red channel is pretty weak. And blue channel is right next to where we tapped. We tapped on this head right here, and this is blue channel, picked it up. Red channel, right there, didn't pick it up. So just to, just to kind of prove this, I'm gonna reset this, and now instead I'm gonna tap right next to the red channel, right over here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tap on, uh, I'm gonna tap on this coil pack. See if we can find that. Looks like it was right here. So you can see red channel obviously picked that up. It's kind of hard to tell, but it doesn't look like blue channel reacted much. I think this is noise. But it's pretty obvious. Red channel reacted. So we know that the, from the last time when I hit next to blue channel that uh, you know red channel is capable of picking up noise and it didn't so these microphones in this orientation I was able to determine if the noise was coming from next to blue channel or next to red channel without question so you can move these microphones anywhere you want and still be able to to, to find the source of the noise and that's that's pretty much it. Um, I think that you know the the concept is kind of proving itself. And uh, what I what I need is a known bad vehicle. Um, the other day I had I had a Chrysler in that had a worn cam lobe, and it was making a racket. And I didn't have this whole setup at that time. Um, but uh, if I had, you know, I might have been able to determine which valve cover to pull. I, I might have even been able to tell you which cylinder um, had the issue, you know, where it was coming from. Um, so the next time I get a known bad vehicle in, I'm going to run, I'm going to use this equipment and uh, see what I come up with, and um, actually put put it to some real world testing. But uh, for now, I mean, this looks extremely promising, and um, you know, hopefully, if I if I stick with this and and uh, get used to it, 
Um, I'll be able to save myself a lot of time and uh, become a lot more accurate when uh, I'm diagnosing uh, noises. So that's it. I just thought I'd sh share with you and I figured you might like it. Peace out.